Welcome and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you're at. Thank you so much for being here today in day 168 of the income stream, which is pretty crazy that we're here. And with a new time, by the way, kids just started school today. In fact, they're both on Zoom calls right now. They're virtual uh, learning right now, which is just, again, really interesting and really odd. But a big shout out to teachers who we are supporting this month here on the channel. And um, just thank you if you're a teacher, or if you know a teacher, or go and thank the teacher. And if you're a homeschooler, thank you as well. So anyway, uh, today we're gonna be talking specifically about how to have endless ideas for content. One of the biggest struggles that I see with a lot of my students and others who are trying to get online is we all know how important content marketing is. Creating valuable content that gets people to know, like, and trust you. Actually pretty simple when you're excited and you're starting out, but then after that honeymoon period, you either feel like you run out of ideas or you're recycling old ones and it's just starting to feel like a drag. And we don't want that to be the case anymore. After today, you won't have to worry about that. So let's get into it. If you're here watching live, say hello to your friends here. If you're here watching the replay, hashtag team replay in the comment section. Let's have some fun. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. All while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. All right. Really excited about today again. Thank you for coming in. Moving forward, we're going to have the 9 a.m. Pacific noon Eastern time for now. Uh, things may change, obviously, and we're still working with the brand new schedule with the kiddos, but again, I'm just very thankful. Let's talk about content a little bit. Content, obviously, an important part of your business. Even if you have an e-commerce business, having content can be helpful. A good example is somebody like Gary Vaynerchuk who had a wine business, wine library, and he created to help support his father's wine and liquor store, uh, Wine Library TV, and actually created some of the first YouTube channels about e-commerce products like that and obviously he's been in the game for a while now and as we all know here on youtube on a blog even on a podcast and live streaming you can create content that can get people to know you to get exposure to new people new avenues to get people to like you or hopefully even love you and become super fan down the road and then finally to trust you you're building that authority and that is then what allows you to build that platform so is content business to me, no, a blog is not a business, a podcast is not a business, your YouTube channel is not a business. Those are the platforms by which you can create content to attract people, to get people to love you, and to have people trust you and your recommendations, whether it is that you're trying to make money through affiliate marketing or trying to make money through selling your own products or even advertising. There's a number of different ways to go about it. We'll save monetization until later. In fact, we've talked about it quite a bit here on the channel. But I want to dive into several tips that I'm going to spend a little bit of time on each. We're going to go into the computer screen. I'm going to share examples of each of these things or as much as possible so that I can help you out. So let's start with the most obvious place to understand what to create content about. Let me ask you, chat, who are we creating content for? Are we creating content for us? Well, technically we are because we want to succeed and we want to grow our audience and whatnot. But who are we actually or supposed to be creating content for? Four. Any guesses? I think it's obvious. We're creating content for our audience, right? Big hello to Basile, Elton, Manos, Luis, GTO, Martin. Uh, we got April, Gen Games. Thank you all for being here, Francis. You guys are amazing. So we are creating content for who? For our target market, our target audience. And the more that we can dive into what they need help with, the easier it's gonna to be to create content, number one, but the more impactful that content will be too. When I first started business, I started to feel like it was a guessing game, right? Content creation, hey, let me think what might be helpful and I'm gonna write about it and hopefully it will work. Hopefully it's one of those spaghetti noodles that sticks on the wall. And unfortunately, if we always take that approach, it's okay to guess, it's okay to experiment, but if you always take that approach of just, well, I think this is gonna be right, then you're going to be half, right, half wrong, or perhaps even more. So we wanna remove the guessing as much as possible. And when it comes to content creation, when you move the, the guessing, it actually saves you time, it allows you to get better results faster, and there we go. So the first thing I would recommend is considering what are people asking about? What is your target market asking about? That's the first and simplest way to go about it. There's a number of different ways to figure out what people are asking about, and probably the easiest way to do this is to 
literally just ask. If you happen to have an audience already or have access to an audience, maybe you're a guest on another blog or podcast or uh, on a social channel, what have you, just simply asking what people need help with is super easy. And unfortunately, we just forget that that's as easy as it can be sometimes, right? So one clear example is yesterday here on the income stream, and I'm, I'm gonna ask this again today, if you happen to be a teacher or know somebody who's a teacher, I would recommend going to this webpage here, not Google, patflynn.com slash teachers. This is a short link to a Google form that we created that is asking, I mean, let's read this here. Hey teachers, you're awesome. I wanna help focusing uh, on te helping teachers this month. If you are a teacher, please send me a note about the skills that you wanna learn. I'll do my best to create content to help. If you know a teacher, feel free to pass this form along to them. No wrong answer to you, I'll do my best. And again, this is at patflynn.com slash teachers. So what am I doing here? I'm actually not just asking, hey, what do you need help with right now? I'm actually niche asking. This is something that I wanna pay attention to here. Niche asking or nasking or I don't know of a good combination word for that. But essentially, instead of just asking everybody, hey, what do you need help with? When you get specific like this, remember, this is just for teachers alone. Are teachers a majority of my audience? Not at all. In fact, it's a smaller percentage. But because this feels like it's just for them, you're able to then now uh, get some answers. So Tim is asking a question here. Hey, how do I get responses if I have a small audience? Well, this is what's nice about niche asking is people who know people, even your friends and family, they may not be the ones that you want answers from, but they may know people. And most of the people who have submitted answers already are actually, in fact, not in my audience. They're people in my audience who have linked to this on my behalf because it's very targeted, if that makes sense. So this is a neat and, and easy way to do this. And don't, don't just ask general questions. Find a specific group of people. Hey, if you happen to be over 50 years old and running your first marathon, let me know what questions you might have so that I can help you. Now a person who's over 50 and is running their first marathon is gonna go, oh, uh, yeah, that, that, that's me. Oh, I'm, I, I can get some personalized help in this manner. And just sharing this in groups and forums and with your friends, colleagues, and your current audience, no matter how big or small, can go a very long way. And always make sure to go, hey, if you know somebody who fits this niche, then go from there. So that's one quick and easy way to do it niche asking. No, don't just ask in general, niche ask, N niche ask, right? Niche ask. Don't wanna say it too fast, it kinda sounds like a bad word. Okay, so patflin.com slash teacher is the example. Now, another way to do this is on social media, right? We have a lot of connections to our audience on social media. You can ask very similar questions, whether it's a formal survey like the Google form I just sent you or a survey monkey situation, or you can just go to social media and ask questions very similarly. So I could go to Twitter uh, and I could say, and I did this the other day, um, I, well, it wasn't a question meant for content, it was actually for support. Again, focusing on teachers. I said, hey, if anybody's a teacher or knows any teachers, I'm gonna be supporting and actually paying from donations that come in here on the live stream, as well as for my own pocket and my family. We wanna support teachers who are paying out of their own pocket, who hears a teacher or who knows a teacher. And social media is a great way to connect directly and indirectly through second, third level sort of connections for the same reason, right? So that that's number one. Number two, you're able to, uh, hold on one sec, and just turn that notification off. Uh, you can ask people directly. So this is the beauty of social media that we often forget. It's not just a way for you to mass send a message out, but you can have direct connections with people. Let me demonstrate this for you right now. So I'm gonna go on to Instagram here. I can't show you my phone, but I'm gonna go to Instagram I'm gonna find somebody who recently commented on something that I have. Um, let's see, mile high so. So I did a Instagram reel for the first time yesterday, which is pretty cool. It actually has more reach than all my YouTube videos from the last week combined so far. So we'll continue to experiment with that, but we'll see. But I'm gonna reach out to this person who left a comment recently, and I'm gonna send them a message, send them a message, and I'm going to put on the video. And this is the best way to do it on social media because it feels very personal. And the nice thing about this is this person will feel like you are asking them directly. But what's cool is by asking them directly, they're going to be wowed. It'll feel uh, very personal, which it is, but they're a representative of your much larger community. So answering their question and even mentioning them in the piece of content, hey, this uh, guy Mile High So on Instagram inspired me to create this piece of content. Now you're actually showing to everybody else that you're active on social media so people can follow you there. 
and that you are actually communicative on social media so people can follow you there as well. Pierre, hi, I'm French. I love your work. I love you too, Pierre. I want to visit France at some point. Okay, so here's Jamie. That's the that's the person's name. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a quick ask, right? Hey Jamie, it's Pat here, and thank you so much for commenting on my last post, by the way. Hope all is well. In fact, I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Is anything um, is there anything that you're struggling with or challenges that you might have? I'd love to, to support you, create some content that might help you. Um, I'm not asking everybody, just was curious since you commented recently. So let me know if you have any questions that I can answer for you. Thanks so much. Bye. And thank you so much for commenting on my last post, by the way. I hope all is well. In fact, I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Is anything, um, is, is there anything that you're struggling with? Anyway, so I just sent that out. And number one, these get a very high response rate. They get a very high response rate. Uh, and number two, it is, uh, Jonathan here says, shotgun mic sounds different on this camera. It's because I'm turning, right? So if I face this way, the shotgun camera is no longer pointing toward my mouth. So I got to figure that out or at least maybe adjust the, um, actually, if I put it on the other side. Thank you, Jonathan. Anyway, reach out individually. This is what I talk about in a specific chapter in my book, Superfans. These individual reach outs, no, it's not scalable, but it's personable. It makes an impact. Nobody's doing this. And you can have a person share, hey, I've been struggling with this, or they might give you some insight. Hey, um, I, that Instagram reel was really cool. Do you have any more information about that? Cool, now I have some insight from my audience directly that can best represent other things too. Now, I don't necessarily wanna create content for every question. I wanna write all these things down. And again, this direct connection to my audience is a great way to go about it. So let me bring my notes back. All right, how else might we know what people are asking about? Well, a great way to do this is just simply on Google, right? So I'm gonna go back to Google here and let's say, uh, I want to know uh, marathon running, right? So I'm going to type marathon training, maybe marathon training. And of course, guess what? This is where people are searching. Um, I have some tools. I have keywords everywhere enabled in my Chrome browser here, which is what's providing these related keywords right here. Yes, you can get the same thing if you scroll all the way down to the bottom. But what's really nice is I have a whole list of other things that people are searching for too. Again, this, this tool this cool tool is called Keywords Everywhere. Keywords Everywhere. And it's providing me a lot of this data. And as you can see, marathon running may be trending downward over time. But if we scroll down, I have some keywords that are also relevant. So half marathon training, marathon training for beginners, etc. Also keywords like uh, marathon training plan PDF, intermediate runners, marathon training app. These are all questions like now I, can, I know that, hey, there are marathon training apps that I can write about. A uh, three-day running program. Hey, I only have three days a week to train. Can I do that? Okay, let's come up with some new ideas. So again, this is where we don't want to necessarily copy directly, but we're just getting inspiration from these searches. A better place beyond Google to go to would be where I'm about to show you. This is called answerthepublic.com. So don't worry about this face. He's just waiting for you to type something in. And it defaults to the UK because this is a UK company. So I'm going to go to United States and I'm gonna go marathon training. Search, yeah, he likes it. He likes it. So marathon training, it's going to process this for just a moment, but what you'll eventually see here is this array of now specifically questions that people are typing into Google and other places, I think maybe Quora and other places. This will create a visualization of all the questions that people are asking, the how, who, are, which, why, what, where, will, when, and can. Woo, let me hit data so this looks a little bit better. So the extension that I was talking about is called Keywords Everywhere. This is the, uh, key, the, the tool here, Keywords Everywhere, which gives you some extra data across all different platforms where search exists, including Amazon, YouTube, et cetera. But this tool is called answerthepublic.com. So now I can see Different, I mean, literally I can create a post for each of these things. Can marathon training affect your period? That maybe I wouldn't be able to answer, but I could have a guest come on, a, a woman to talk about that. Can marathon training help you lose weight? Can marathon training cause anemia? Uh, can, or how to marathon training schedule? How to eat marathon training? Uh, what is marathon training? What to eat marathon training? Diet. So it seems to me that there's a lot of questions that people are asking about the best diet. And then I can put on my content creation title, hack brain 
to create really good headlines, right? How to create the best diet for your marathon training or training for a marathon, five diet plans you want to avoid, right? These kinds of things. And then of course, making sure to answer those questions properly. But uh, Keywords Everywhere is a Chrome extension and this tool, Answer the Public, again, will list out all these questions, right? Which will, will, Mar will Smith mar marathon training? I don't know about that. Is, did, has he ever run a marathon? I'm not sure, but that's really interesting. So this is where you can get, again, some inspiration and literally a post or a video or a podcast episode about one, if not potentially a mix-up or a mashup of a bunch of these, if they're topic-related, can be absolutely great. Now, there are some tricks in Google that I'm still learning how to do. If I go to google.com, for example, and I wanna type in marathon training, right? Before I hit enter, I can see a lot of the recommended searches here too. This is a nice place where I can get some information before hitting enter. I can see the what's called autofill, and that could be great. What I could also do is I believe I can type in asterisk, and if I put an asterisk in there, it'll actually fill out an autofill where the asterisk is for me. So I see half marathon training, half marathon training plan, Hal Higdon marathon training, 16 week marathon training. I can maybe do, um, why is marathon, why are marathons asterisk? Why are they so expensive? Why are they so long? Why are they on Sundays? Why are they so popular? Why are they conducted? So the asterisk in your Google search can essentially be, hey, a, hey, Google, fill in the blank with the most popular stuff here, right? The asterisk is the way to do it. On YouTube, which would be the next tool that I could recommend to you, you can do essentially the same thing. So I'm gonna pop into YouTube here and I'm gonna search for marathon training and just see what comes up. So here's marathon training. And again, keywords everywhere is gonna show me some results on the right-hand side here. I also have vidIQ, which shows me some additional terms and things that people are searching for here on YouTube, as well as a score for certain keywords. There's a lot of data, right? vidIQ and TubeBuddy are two YouTube-specific tools. Keywords everywhere still sort of makes its way onto here too with, um, is there a more detailed breakdown? Let's see, if I click this, this will give me a nice chart of the results for marathon training on YouTube, as well as just information about them, who the channel is. Now I'm getting information about, okay, here are the channels I could potentially partner with or piggyback off of the views, how young or old these videos are, are the keywords in the title, all those sorts of things, which is pretty cool. But let me go back to YouTube here. And if I go to YouTube, what I can do is I believe I can do the same thing. If I go here and then I do an underscore, it'll do the same thing, I think. Is that underscore or? I think the underscore is what does the half marathon training, ultra marathon training. It does the fill in the blank for me, please YouTube situation once again. So the underscore can go uh, a very long way. So now again, I have all this content that I can use as inspiration to help me for what people are asking about, right? So how do I marathon training, and then I'm gonna put an underscore there. How do I, maybe that's not gonna be the best. Yeah, essentially the same things come up. How do I asterisk? Maybe that's not the best search term. Anyway, you're gonna have to experiment and play around with it a little bit, but again, using these tools that are available to you, you should have plenty, perhaps dozens, if not hundreds of different things that you could choose from. And what's nice about this, again, to go back to my first point, is this is, stuff that people wanna know about, right? And if you can answer the questions that people wanna know about, boom, it's a match made in heaven. Barry, what's up? Hey, y'all just dropping in uh, to drop a like. Thank you so much, Barry. I appreciate you for being here. And everybody, this is great. We have about a couple hundred people. Uh, this is awesome, says to Charles, uh, great. And uh, Susan here says, Pat, did you say that the, you add the asterisk that will tell you the most recent searches or the top searches? The asterisk will be the most popular um, and popular is a term that you know has different variables in it but the asterisk in google will fill in the blank for you with the most popular so i would say that let's actually just give this a quick shot here on google really quick how do i 
and this is kind of doing this already because it's at the end of the search, but how do I blank delete my Instagram? That's the most popular thing right now. How do I register to vote? How do I take a screenshot? How do I register to vote in California? How do I contact EDD by phone? Um, how do I renew my passport, right? But maybe if I go the opposite way, asterisk my passport. There, you kind of have to go back, right? So um, it didn't do it up front, so I had to go and fill it in after. How do I renew my passport? Renew my passport, track my passport, WD my passport. What do I need to do to renew my passport? Lost my passport, rush my passport. You see how that works? So that works. Cool. The asterisk, you like you like that. Okay, so we got some value. Even if you have to leave right now, you're getting some value. So use the asterisk in Google. Google's free, right? You don't need keywords everywhere. You don't need any of these keyword research tools. Just simply seeing this will allow you to go, oh, people are interested in that. And now you at least have a better chance of this stuff being something that hits home with people. And if you write about this and post it on your blog and or YouTube channel, what it does is it shows relevance that your channel, your blog is actually relevant to what people are searching for. So it can only do anything but uh, raise your brand up, right? It would behoove you not to use this asterisk in the future, right? It would absolutely behoove you. Okay, let's move on. Now, in addition to figuring out what people are asking about, right? And, or just, just asking people what they need help with, uh, a better way and a more impactful way to figure out what to write about and create content about, that'll actually help you land potentially what a book could be about or potentially what a um, course could be about or a series of videos could be about would be to not just figure out what people are asking questions about, but most of all, trying to understand what are people struggling with? What are the biggest challenges they're having? Because they might not know the right questions to ask, but they could definitely portray what it is that they're needing help with, right? And for those of you who are new here, um, Behoove is just this running joke that we have here. Um, it is a word. I don't know if you could see that, behoove. It is a word that I have to put in in every live stream every day or else I have to do something that I shouldn't do. I, we haven't defined what that is yet because I haven't had to do that. But uh, behoove is the secret word and that's just, you know, I love adding little Easter eggs like that. I even written about that in my book, Super Fans, right? It's like the secret menu at in and out And now... And forever from this point forward, I'm never going to mention it again. I will mention Behoove. I won't tell you why. And it's just a lot of new people here at the new time today, which is pretty cool. Um, it becomes something that when the chat goes, Behoove, there it is. It's like, what was that about? There's a community here that like knows stuff that I don't. Like, let me in on this secret. And people who know it are going to feel empowered to share it. So this is why if you ever come to the West Coast and you go to dinner with somebody at In-N-Out who, uh, who realizes you've never been to In-N-Out before, I guarantee you, they're going to tell you uh, that uh, they're, they're going to tell you about the secret menu and they're going to feel very proud about that, right? So Behoove is one of those little Easter eggs that we have here among many, right? That uh, is, is like that. Watch your mouth if Behoove doesn't come out of it. I like it. Okay. So if I don't say Behoove, the chat will remind me I'm sure the next day and I'll have to, uh, I'll have to someday in that next stream do Watch Your Mouth, which is a, a game that's very embarrassing. So I like that. Thank you. Thank you. That behoove will need an emoji. I think a bee and a and a hoof, a hoof, would, would work just fine. Anyway, sorry, chat. Getting 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 a little distracted here, and it would behoove me not to get back to it. So I'm gonna get back to it now. Okay, done with that. Thanks, y'all. Uh, let's. Um, Jonathan says I'm here a lot, and I didn't know about the behoove. Literally, like, three days ago, we, we, we came up with this, right? Literally three days ago. Okay, squirrel. All right, next, let's talk about what are people struggling with. This is a game changer because now you can understand and empathize a little bit more about the overall goals of what your audience is. Oftentimes, the questions that you're answering are sort of surface level. When you get to the struggles and the challenges, that's the deep-rooted level at where people really need some help. And you can create content that can affect people's lives even more. It's one thing to answer a question about how do I get my podcast on Spotify? It's another thing to go, I'm struggling with getting people to find my podcast. And now I can give them all the answers, give them some results, quick wins, and they're in my brand now, right? So that's kind of the difference here. So there's a couple key ways that we can get an, literally an endless amount of this. And here's what we wanna do. You have an email autoresponder, 
you can literally start with zero emails and this will still continue to work because as you get new subscribers, this will work automatically for you. So hear me out here. You have an email autoresponder. If you don't know what that is, those are emails that you write ahead of time that get sent out automatically after a certain period of time, maybe immediately after, a couple days after, a week after, two months after. You can set that time to whatever it is. And in one of your first emails, maybe not the first one, but maybe the second or third, I would like to get this ant off my shoulder that I feel crawling on me. Um, I would like to know what they're struggling with. So the third email, the subject line could just be as simple as, what's your biggest challenge right now? And literally just asking that question in that email. You can voice it whichever way you want. You want people to open this email and you want people to answer it and you want people to reply. Yes, an autoresponder email, you want a reply to. Short email, hey, Pat here, I would love to know at this very moment, what's your number one biggest challenge related to online business? What's your number one biggest challenge related to running a marathon? Please reply. I'm gonna collect these replies and share information with you and everybody else to help you. And I'll let you know that I receive it. Early on, it's easier to reply to each person individually. Over time, you might want to just express that there is no expectation for a reply because you get 100 emails a day or more, I get about 600 emails a day, just so you know. So Jess, thank you so much for all you do. And we had Jess on as a guest yesterday. Did everybody enjoy Jess coming in? We're gonna have more guests come in, especially more members of my team, but other people I have connections with, maybe some of you here on the show as well, but that will be uh, really cool. Anyway, here's what happens. Person subscribes to your email list, they subscribe to your email list, then you know a week goes by, they get that next email, and it says, what are you struggling with? Please reply, they reply to you. Well, guess what, the next day, is seven days after somebody else subscribed the day after the person before. So now every day you're getting constant reminders and constant emails of what people are struggling with or what their biggest challenges are. And you can start to take these challenges and start creating content about them. You can do it on a more individual basis. Hey, Joe asked this question, Janice asked this question, etc. Or you might see a pattern of a bunch of people asking or challenged within the same realm. And what you can do is now go, hey, so many of you asked for this. Uh, we're gonna create a webinar to help answer this question for you and, and get you through these struggles and, and, and provide this outcome for you. Here's a book, right? That's where my book, Will It Fly, came from. How to test your next business idea so you don't waste your time and money. And the beauty about these replies that you get is they're not a survey reply, A, B, C, or D. You want them to be open-ended questions, right? Open-ended questions because you wanna hear the language that people are using, the specific words. That's how I knew that the tagline of this book was the way it was supposed to be because people were like, I'm, I'm, I don't wanna waste my time. I don't wanna waste my money. I wanna validate my next business idea. Okay, how to validate your next business idea so you don't waste your time and money. There it is, very clear. Again, removing the guesswork completely. So that's a great place to go to figure out what people's struggles are. Another way to do this would be to, and I'm trying to figure out if I could demo this. Um, I don't have access to some of these forums where you might wanna do this, but this is essentially what you'd wanna do. You go to a forum, this is tip number two. The first tip was within the realm of struggles and challenges, the email autoresponder, right? And I see a question here as well from, who is this? Um, hold on, you don't need to see my face that close. So I was looking for a question from Rhino Dog. Where to go? Rhino Dog, could you link this in with using SpeakPipe to get responses and use a question and answer in a podcast episode? Absolutely. So this is really smart, Rhino. Thank you. So speakpipe.com. Let me go there now just so you can know where I'm talking about. Speakpipe.com is a website where you can set up a and get a link essentially. When people click on that link, it looks like this. And literally a person can just start recording their question and they could record it on their phone or wherever. And what's cool is if you have a podcast and if you have those people's permission, obviously, you can take that uh, voice message, that question that they have and pop it into a podcast. And guess what? This is exactly what I did for the first thousand episodes of Ask Pat. If you go to askpat.com, we're now in Ask Pat 2.0, which is a much longer coaching call where I can get deeper because after answering a thousand questions, I eventually realized that, um, yeah, like I need to go deeper with people. So if you scroll down here, you'll see a number of questions um, and uh, you can get into the archive from there. So anyway, the first 1,000 episodes were done in that manner, having people submit their question with a speak pipe and go from there. 
uh, it wasn't asking for their struggle, but it was asking for specific questions. But that's what's nice about the 30 minute coaching call. I can get into the struggles, but anyway, any which way you want to do that, it could work out really well. And that's uh, really important information that you are collecting from there. Now to continue this even further with this idea about forums and discussions, here's what I would do. You go into a forum and or a group or, or, or something, and you know how there's a search bar within that forum or group? Search for terms like need help. And, and the reason why I'm doing this is because you want to put them in quotations, right? Need help or I need or struggling with or biggest challenge or I want. Put them in quotations because when you hit enter, you're going to see most of these forums and groups are going to display conversations where people were using that exact phrase. That's the, this is the, I, I feel like this is sarcasm every time I do this, but the, the exact phrase literally the exact phrase is what is being shown on the search results. And you can now see in context, people asking, hey, I need help with blank or I'm struggling with blank. These are conversations that already exist. You don't even literally have to not ever even interact with those people, although I would recommend joining these groups and interacting. But this is a great, what's up, Epic Vlogs? Good to see you here. Um, but that is a great way to understand what conversations are already happening and you can go from there to answer those questions and maybe even pop back in and say, hey, I saw your question. I created an answer for you and that could work really well. Susan says, I'm having a hard time getting people to use SpeakPipe. How can I get them to use it? It's hard to get people to use it, right? There is uh, needing to be some sort of incentive. Uh, the incentive for Ask Pat is you might get on the show, right? So there's some sort of incentive for, you know, the really uncomfortableness of, you know, getting behind the microphone sometimes. It's a big ask to get people to go, hey, leave a voicemail for me and not even knowing what's gonna happen next, right? So if you can provide a little bit more context, Susan, perhaps of how this is gonna be used and why and how important it is, that could work a really long way. And you can even go, hey, I pick one question every month to get a $10 Amazon gift card or something like that. Or I do a coaching call for one random person every month who submits a question. And that again is enough incentive for people to go through, right? What's up, Abel? Thanks for being here. I'm a 20 year old. And I have social media marketing agency and a contact production agency. If my clients do not want to pay the extra money for the higher production to make it look better, is that a problem? Um, it's not necessarily a problem. It just shows you that you perhaps are either attracting a certain type of clientele who cannot either afford that or there might be a messaging or positioning problem, meaning they, might, they just might not know uh, how much value comes in a higher production. If you could show proof that there is an ROI, that the higher production that you're offering is in fact something that's going to get them more in return. And you can of course frame that in a way where it better uh, provides an image for their brand, it's, it's more useful and you get higher watch times. That's what they're paying for now. They don't wanna pay for higher production. They wanna pay for what the higher production could offer them. So that's where we wanna focus, if that makes sense. Awesome. How we good, chat? How we, how we doing? Are we good? Let me know in the comments getting value from today. I'm going quite quickly here, but of course these get recorded and you can use them on a replay um, or, or you can watch them on a replay. So hopefully you're taking notes or you can come and watch later, but uh, let me know if you're getting value with a thumbs up. That is the way to do it. And I see one thumbs down here. Hopefully we could turn that frown upside down and turn that into a thumbs up later. But if not, all good. Still helps with the algorithm and I appreciate you for that. But again, chat, just let me know that you're getting value from here. Okay, let's keep going. We are about halfway through the live stream and about halfway through my notes that I see here, which is great. So we talked about, just to recap, starting with what people are asking about already, right? Just simply asking, and if you wanna set up a survey to be a place to ask, if you can niche ask, meaning not just ask everybody, but maybe ask a certain demographic. Hey, for everybody who's eating gluten-free, I have a question for you, right? Or hey, everybody who's a teacher, I have a question for you. That way people go, oh, I'm a teacher, okay, I'm, I've, you've got my attention now versus, hey, everybody, doesn't matter who you are, like what's your question, right? So that's that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, social media, right? And even reaching out directly to ask people because that personalization goes a very long way. People don't like, if you've spent the time to create a video for them, they're gonna feel bad not answering back. So this is a way to almost force, and this is a sarcastic or um, force uh, way to get people to reply and, and, and leave an answer for you. Number three, Google. Right, Google's a great place and using tools like keywords everywhere or in fact, answer the public. Answer the public is free and easy to use. You can literally see what questions people are typing in and then YouTube as well can give you some insight into what topics people are talking about and are interested in too. 
Then we talked about what are people struggling with, like not just the surface level questions, but the deeper uh, questions and struggles and challenges that people have using your email autoresponder to set up just this automated system where you're getting replies all the time and not only hearing about their pains and problems, challenges, struggles, you're hearing also about the exact language that they're using. And number two related to that, going into forums and groups and looking up things like I need or I want or need help with, struggling with, question for everybody, those kinds of things can go a very long way too. Next, let's talk about what is trending or what's popular. There's always new things that are trending, always new things that are popular and writing and recording information that's in and around that, not copying, but using that as inspiration can be a really great way to get an endless ideas, uh, endless amount of ideas for things that may be great to create content about, right? So what's already trending, what's already proven to be something that is worth talking about? That way, you know that there's already gonna be at least a better chance of this thing hitting with your target audience. So there's a couple ways to do this. The easiest way is if you already have some sort of content platform, whether it be social media or a blog, podcast, YouTube channel, whatever, find out on your own platform, what are the topics or the posts that are getting the most activity? Those are just signals that, hey, this stuff is people that, this is stuff people wanna learn more about, so now you can take it a step further. It's okay to write about or record about the same kind of information. You don't want the same episode twice. You want to take one episode and take it another angle or further or deeper, and that's how you can get away with actually focusing on one topic, but creating multiple pieces of content in and around that one topic, right? Uh, so that's a great way to go about it, the different angles and focusing on the different pieces of that much larger puzzle. But you can find out what's popular on your blog, on your YouTube channel, on your social streams, or your live streams, et cetera, already, and you can get some information from there. You could also find out what's popular on other people's websites, right? Other people's uh, channels. So one way to do this is, in fact, an easy way to do this is on YouTube, right? So let's use our marathon training example. And I'm gonna type in marathon training, and I'm gonna share my screen here so we can get those results. So marathon training, right? Seth James Damore, Alex the Vagabond, uh, the run experience. So, okay, these are popular videos about marathon training, but I wanna know what other topics or other things in and around marathon training that I wanna do. So I'm actually gonna click on, not the video here, but I'm gonna click on the channel. So let's go to the run experience. And this is his, his or her channel. Hey runners, Coach Nate here. So then I wanna to go to videos and then I wanna to go to sort by most popular. So now I can get a sense of these people who are on YouTube, whether I have a YouTube channel or not, these are the popular videos that work. Now I can use this as again, really important, inspiration. Do not copy word for word take it one step further, make it even better, if that makes sense, right? So for example, this most popular video, 4.3 million views, 4.2 million views, right? So here we go. How to run longer without getting so tired. It looks like I've even watched some of that one, which is really interesting, right? So I might create a piece of content that might say five ways to run longer without burning out. Um, how to run, uh, best foods, to eat so you can run the longest. Um, why do I get tired when I run? Uh, three reasons we get tired when we run. Um, let's see, this is all just from one video, right? But I know that this is a topic, so now I can get inspired by it. I wouldn't do how to run longer without getting so tired, or I wouldn't even do how to run longer without getting tired. Although if I'm on a different channel, then maybe it would make more sense. And of course, nobody necessarily owns these titles but you're always gonna be not, you, you, it's, really, it's gonna be really difficult to outpace them if, if you indeed uh, select the same title uh, because even Google shows and displays videos and you, like they're always gonna outrank you. So how might you take a different spin? How would you make this even better, right? How would you make it even more interesting, right? You know this topic makes sense, but um, <laughs> uh, so I'm glad this is helping and, and great. You, you, GTO is like, I'm starting a new blog and was thinking I have nothing to write about. Hopefully you know that's not true. I think that you just haven't done the research yet to figure out that there's an unlimited amount of things that you could write about. Three exercises to get faster. Um, 
three stretches to get faster. Uh, three of the most popular running exercises. Um, how to get faster, faster. Uh, five exercises that work like crazy. Proper running foot strike steps to improve it. Um, running techniques debunked. Um, the five step, uh, five things you need to do with your body while running to run faster and not get as tired, right? How to start running when you're overweight. Um, you know, fat, no worries. We're going to help you run your first marathon. I don't know. I'm just kind of brainstorming here if that makes sense. But hopefully this gives you some ideas on how you can sort of take what somebody else has already proven to work and actually make it work for yourself too, right? So sorry, I wasn't sharing my screen there. But um, yeah, so that that's where you can, and that's just, this is literally just one channel. Like if we go back, love this channel, by the way, it's beautifully, beautifully done. I'm gonna go back. Let's go to this guy, Seth James. All right, I'm gonna go to videos. Again, I wanna go sort by most popular. Two hour runs, the two hour principle. So that's maybe more of a scientific one about the two hour marathon, which uh, that time threshold just got broken. The runner's not, so that now I'm getting inspired. Okay, uh, the best way to tie your shoes for a marathon. Boom, right? Here's another how to run, fa how to run faster. Uh, running shoe early matrix. So there's a lot of shoe related things here too. So now my head is like three shoes I use to run marathons and the best one I recommend. Wow. Okay. Now here we go. Right. So I, I, I like how we're getting again, inspiration from this. I like this banner too. I think somebody just Chris said that too. Daily running inspiration and seek beauty, work hard and love each other. Great. I love that. And little times here, this person sort of going faster. Really cool. Good job, Seth. Well done. And congrats on 100,000. Uh, okay, so another place that we can do something similar is, in fact, Amazon. Amazon.com. So let's go to Amazon. Uh, marathon running. Marathon training. Did I spell that right? Okay, marathon training. So here's the Hal Higdon book, right? So I'm going to open that book and I'm going to look inside the cover. Look inside. And again, we are not copying. Do not copy. We're getting inspiration. I'll show you how. I'm going to look inside the cover and I'm looking at the table of contents here. So now I'm just getting inspiration, right? So number 14, water therapy, right? So now I can go how to use a pool to train for your marathon, right? Um, heart rate, top five tools to monitor your heart and the best one for running the marathon or the smallest heart rate monitors for your next marathon, right? Um, pace. Um, maybe I create a calculator that is based on weight, age, time, and pace. And I can go, okay, I'm running my first marathon. What pace would make sense for me that would take into account the degradation of energy over time, right? So there's so many different things like that. And I think that that could be cool. So the perfect pace. So what pace should I run when I'm a beginner, right? Um, so, you know, first marathon, use this pace. Now I'm like, okay, what's that pace? And then I can go into more information in that piece of content about, okay, well, how should I uh, run this down, right? And Nancy's like, do you think that Pat is running a marathon soon? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm on the live streaming marathon, Nancy. We're 168 days into this, but anyway. Um, I've run half marathons, several. I've run triathlons, but never a full marathon. I'm not quite sure that I want to do that. Uh, anyway, hopefully this is helping, but this is where we can find... Uh, what's working and, 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 and um, you know, already for others and using that as an, again, inspiration, taking a topic that's popular elsewhere, knowing that that's something people want to know about more about. It's obviously already proven and then taking a different spin and in fact, trying to make it even better. That's what we're trying to do here. That That's what we're trying to do here. How to get to the finish line says scrap happy. How to run the last mile of your marathon best. 
had a best finish a race in the last 500, 200, or 5,280 feet. I'm just trying to make the numbers more interesting to look at, right, if that makes sense. Elaine says, yay, Pat. Daryl says, Pat, do you have any ideas of what to do if you're having trouble defining your target mark, uh, your target audience? Uh, yeah, um, have conversations with as many people as possible. And also, uh, th th there's a really good exercise that um, was once taught to me by one of my friends. Her name is Jamie Masters. And this exercise was called the one page, one paragraph, one sentence exercise. And this is spending some time to write a whole page about the kinds of people that you want to help and the people that you want to serve and how you want to serve them, the whole page, right? Um, and, and all the ins and outs about that and just kind of more general. Then you take that general one pager and you put it into a more defined paragraph. How do you take that and extrapolate that and turn it into one paragraph that's much more tight and much more defined? And then the biggest trick, but the most useful is to take that one paragraph and turn it into one sentence. And that sentence can become your pitch, your elevator pitch, your 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 mantra, your who it is that you help, your your tagline. Um, I think that it's going to take some experimentation. I think it's going to take conversation and just speaking out loud about it. Because as you speak out loud about it, you start to hear where you're fumbling and where it doesn't make sense. It kind of makes sense here, but it kind of doesn't. But when you speak it out, it either does or doesn't. And so you can try to make your way toward wh where it does, if that makes sense. Pat, what was Jamie's last name? Masters. Jamie Masters. Eventualmillionaire.com. She's awesome. She was uh, the first person to ever invite me into a mastermind group, and we've been together for over a decade now. We meet every Monday. That's the same Jamie. Cool. Another thing that we could do about what's already popular and get trends from is what's trending in the world right now. What is popular? In fact, a quick story for you. You know what to do. Okay. So I have a good friend of mine. His name is Daryl Eves. He is the founder of VidSummit, a very popular and great conference for people who do YouTube and video. And what I love about this conference is it's very content heavy, very, very, very relationship oriented versus VidCon, which is more screaming teenagers trying to find their favorite YouTuber kind of thing, right? So that's, um, that's who we're talking about, Daryl Eves. He came to San Diego once to help me when I was trying to build my YouTube channel back when it was about 60,000 subscribers. It's 200,000 more than that now. So he's definitely helped out amongst many other people. Roberto Blake, Sean Cannell, Sonny Leonard Doozy, several others have helped. Um, uh, Tim Schmoyer, so many others. But when Daryl and I sat down together, he made me for one hour write down all the things that were gonna happen in the year 20. 19. All the movies that were coming out, all the popular um, election related things, anything that was happening that was planned for one year ahead of time, I was supposed to write down. And I thought this was really interesting. I'm like, Daryl, why are you having me think about like all these things? What does this have to do with my YouTube channel? Well, the reason is because you can do what's called hijacking pop culture and you can use your platform along with pop culture and things that are happening right now in the world where everybody's gonna be searching about these things to actually teach your topic, right? So perhaps there's a new Harry Potter movie coming out, right? Well, maybe you might wanna create a piece of content in and around the time that Harry Potter's coming out and how Harry Potter teaches us marketing. I don't know, I'm just making this up. Uh, five ways to magically run your fastest marathon like Harry Potter. And again, just using those keywords in and around pop culture and the things that are happening around this time can go a very long way. And number one, potentially riding the wave of people who are looking for these things. I know that there's a doctor on uh, YouTube who does this very well. Um, whatever's happening in the world, he's, he's, he's sort of behind it, right? So let me go to YouTube right now. Maybe I can find him and give you some examples. So if I go to Dr. Mike, Dr. Mike is an awesome doctor, YouTuber, and he's funny and he's got some great videos. But if I look at his past videos here, I'm seeing if I could find anything. So let's see, uh, Friends, right? So Friends became popular. And so he's created a doctor reacts to Friends medical scenes. And, he, and what's really cool is he teaches during this time too. I would highly recommend watching, it's kid friendly and it's really fun, and he makes it fun and funny too at the same time. Um, so a very popular thing like Friends, 
doctor reacts to medical scenes, right? Maybe I do a friends related thing and talk about how Central Perk was an absolutely abysmal business and it should have gone out of business because they use the same couch every time. They never had new patrons come in and they're meant like whatever. I'm just making this up, but there could be a way to take advantage of what everybody else is searching for and what's on top of everybody's mind. And yes, 6.12 million subscribers. Let's see here. School reopening, obviously. Uh, the uncomfortable truth about reopening schools. Uh, what else is new here? I'm looking for like news related things specifically. So I think social distancing, why I'm still running, this is coming in and around the time that the person broke the two mile, uh, the two hour mark. Um, let's see. I'm looking for news related things specifically. Here, Doc McStuffins. Doctor reacts to Doc McStuffins. Right, which is a show on Nickelodeon that everybody was talking about for a while because everybody wanted to ban it, right? So um, people were wanting to ban Dr. McStuffin, so he created something and actually took the opposite approach. In fact, sharing that it actually has legit um, medical advice that like, he supports. Anyway, how you can take something that's happening in the world right now. So, you know, I think that um, things related to... I don't know. I mean, there, there is the election coming up. That's sort of on everybody's mind right now. I'm not necessarily sure that we want to get into politics, but uh, that's an option. Um, with 2021 coming, um, there is, uh, you know, there was supposed to be Olympics, but it got canceled. So um, how to, how to reskip, like, I don't know. There's just so many things that are happening in the world that we can use and, and sort of news hijack. And what you can do is you can set up, um, some certain news stations that you trust. Uh, and you can also find a lot of other YouTubers like doing this strategy too. So you could pay attention to what they're doing and sort of pull inspiration from them too, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, I'm just looking to see if there's anything more clear. He comes up with a lot of content, uh, really, really, really consistent, which is really cool. I mean, there's some obvious ones uh, here, right? Like a year ago, he created this holiday survival uh, guide, holiday survival guide and vacation giveaway. So, you know, seasonality is really important. There's a lot of uh, right now content coming out in uh, and around the launching of schools, the, op the reopening of schools. Um, so like whatever's happening in the world, whatever seems to be uh, at the top of news, uh, you can create content that is mixed in with your own stuff too. So we can go there. Now, a couple more ideas for you as we close up this live stream here today, and then uh, the kids are back at doing some school things. We have to go to the school to pick up some stuff today, which is really cool, and I get and we get to see the teachers and stuff, but again, they're all doing virtual learning right now. But uh, what's really cool is we can set up Google Alerts for certain things too, and I don't know how much you know about or um, focus on Google Alerts, but this is a great thing that we can use to understand what's happening right now about certain topics, right? So here I am on Google Alerts. I wanna create an alert about Marathon training. What I can do is I can see the latest things about this, right? Local runner to participate in virtual Boston Marathon. So now I'm like, okay, virtual marathons, how do they work and how do I get involved, right? Um, this is just stuff that's more recent, but I can create an alert and I can get a little bit more advanced with the options. I can get an email once a day. I can get an email once a week. I can have... Um, show the best results or all results, certain regions. So the United States only, for example, and I could deliver it to my email or I can even have an RSS feed. And then it's gonna give me a link for that that I can just use to check in with every single day. And this will just give me insight to, again, what is happening right now. And yes, Google Alerts is still a thing and you can use it really well. In fact, one, one way that I use Google Alerts is I put my brand names in there so that I can see whenever anybody else mentions my brand and I could see if it's something negative, which sometimes it is, I can go in there and put out fires before they actually get out of control. But if it's something positive, I can go and see, be like, wow, this random blogger from the other side of the country wrote about me. I wouldn't have found it otherwise. So I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna reach out to them and thank them and see if we can do something together. I don't know, there's there's many different ways to do that. You can, you can set up alerts like this through tools like vidIQ or TubeBuddy for YouTube, 
but I do this for Google as well, especially with my own brands again, just so I, I'm paying attention to what is being spread out there and to make sure that we're sort of on top of things, if that makes sense. Uh, the way that we would use this for trying to figure out what content to create is very similar to what we talked about earlier. So for example, on marathon training, uh, you might be able to type in something like um, marathon training guide or marathon training help. And just whenever anybody writes that or comes up with something related to that, um, you know, here's a runner's world article that just came up. 13 reasons the half marathon is the best distance. Maybe you disagree. And then you can say, hey, I read this article on runner's world that the 13 uh, reasons why the half marathon is the best distance. Let me actually... Um, counter that. Here are 13 reasons why it's the worst distance and you can get into how it affects your knees and how much longer it takes to train and perhaps this is because you focus on starting with beginners and, and, and you want people to start with a 5k first. So now you're actually newsjacking and you can go, hey, runner's world, I, d I disagree. And then you can start this little bit of controversy if this makes sense. Um, a nice friendly one. But uh, or you can just go, hey, I read this article and I want to focus in on something. Um, let's see. Oh, these these are the reasons. It's weird that it's not numbered. Uh, let's see. Training plans are usually only 10 weeks, not 16. So guess what? You can race with less long term planning. OK, and I might create an article that says um, the 10 week marathon training plan in an article by Runner's World. They mentioned 13 different reasons why the half marathon was the best. One of those reasons was because your training plan can be a little shorter. Instead of an usual 16-week plan, we can do 10 weeks, as mentioned here. You link to the article. It shows relevance to Google that you are actually paying attention to the latest news here. And it also shows relevancy to your audience and traffic that's there too. Oh, you read Runner's World? Well, technically, Google Alert told me about it. But that's how you can, again, show that you're now even more involved in as a result, have more authority in this too. Don says, uh, Pat Flynn, see Gary uh, Brooks, a principal who talks from his car to teachers now about online teaching. Hilarious. Cool. I love that. People finding just creative ways to do this. Anyway, um, and then finally, the most important thing is that as you come up with new ideas, you have a place to put them, right? So having some sort of note tracking system that you are familiar with, I'm not going to tell you what to use because you probably have an idea and I, I like what works for one person might not work for another. So finding some way to, or even dictate notes, maybe some sort of automation. Hey, hey Siri, please make a note that Runner's World has an article and I need to focus on the 10 week training plan in a blog post, right? So that's how we can do that. And hopefully that makes sense. So whatever note taking idea tracking system you have, um, make it happen. So hey chat, thank you so much for today. I'm gonna bounce a couple minutes early because we gotta go to the school and pick up some stuff. But I appreciate you so much for coming in. Appreciate you for coming in uh, as well. And um, I don't know, you're the same person on both of these screens, so I don't know why I did that. But anyway, uh, make sure to come in tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, whatever that time is for you, write it down. That's gonna be the new time every day here. But the link is still the same. patflynncom slash the income stream is where you wanna go. Thank you for all the thumbs up today. Record thumbs up that, hey, we turn that thumbs down upside up. We, uh, we, we, we turn it right side up. So, hey, we, we accomplished our goal here. Uh, thank you so much for today. I appreciate you. If you're watching the replay, let me know what your favorite tip was. And if you're watching this later, uh, feel free to share it. And I hope this helps you in the future. Never run out of content again. Talked about a lot of great things. Thank you so much for, for, the, for the attention, for the love, for the support. Big welcome and thank you to all the new members today. Uh, I saw a couple platinum members come in earlier in the chat. See, I, can I even find them? No, the chat's way too far back. But anyway, good stuff today, y'all. Thanks so much. I appreciate you. Peace out. And as always, Team Flynn for the win. Well done today, everybody. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. All while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. See you, recognize you, appreciate you, you belong here. And a big thank you and shout out again this month, every day to all the teachers in this world, at home and at school doing their thing. You're amazing, I appreciate you. Peace out, much love. Bruh.